Continuing with lesson 19, in this section we will cover uh, topic 19b, uh, implement backup and recovery. The process of implementing backup and recovery is a critical component of IT strategy. It involves identifying essential data and scheduling regular secure backups to protect against data loss. Establishing robust recovery protocols ensures minimal downtime in the event of data corruption or loss. Uh, this process uh, not only safeguards information, uh, but also provides peace of mind knowing that business continuity is uh, protected uh, through well-planned, tested, and reliable backup and recovery procedures. When it comes to uh, backup operations, there are some key points that uh, it is important to keep in mind. Understanding the importance of data backup and recovery is essential in any data management strategy. Data loss can happen due to hardware failure, software bugs, human error, or malicious attacks. Having a backup ensures that you can restore your data and maintain business continuity. Now, the question is what to back up, or at least it's one of the questions. Deciding what data to back up can depend on the nature of your work or the importance of your files. Typically, uh, you would want to back up documents, photos, applications, uh, and system files. Uh, it's also wise to regularly back up configuration files and uh, databases if you manage a server. Now, obviously, this is here we're talking mostly about uh, uh, personal files and, and workstations. In uh, a server environment, uh, most, most likely there would be a, um, a file server that would contain you know, critical uh, data to back up from a company. Now, in the exam objective, uh, basically here they are referring to uh, the workstation backup or like personally data backup, uh, but uh, you shouldn't have any critical data backup in your personal computers anyway. Uh, the other important question would be how to uh, store backups. There are various methods to store backups, including on external hard drives or network attached storage or NAS in the cloud or even uh, on tape if dealing with large data sets. And this would be obviously um, at a company level, uh, at a personal level, you're not gonna use, very unlikely you're gonna use uh, tape these days, right? The uh, three, two, one rule is often uh, recommended, uh, which basically means that you keep at least three copies of your data store two backup copies on different storage media with one of them located off-site. Another important point is testing and validating recovery procedures. Regularly testing and validating recovery procedures ensures that your backups are functional and can be restored. It's important to verify that the data is intact and the recovery process meets the recovery time objectives or RTO and the recovery point objectives or RPOs. Uh, another uh, point that we want to address is um, especially in the uh, personal workstation backup, the Windows tools uh, for uh, personal data backups. There are obviously uh, tools that we can use with Windows, but at a company level, at an enterprise level, most likely there are third-party tools. Uh, so Windows provides tools specifically designed to help use, uh, users uh, back up their personal data. In Windows 10 and Windows 11, uh, the file history is a feature in Windows that automatically saves copies of your files to an external drive so that you can revert to a previous version of a file if needed. Uh, Windows Backup and Restore Center 
uh, is a utility that allows you to create backups and restore them uh, or restore from backups uh, created at an earlier time. It can be used to create a system image or a backup individual files and folders, or rather backup individual files and folders, which we will uh, work on later on in, uh, in the labs. Now, each of these uh, points uh, could be a separate section in a larger document discussing the uh, detailed procedures and practices uh, for data backup and recovery for Windows users. Uh, but again, uh, for the objective of this exam, uh, this would be enough to be able to answer questions for the A-plus exam. Backup methods. Backup frequency and retention are two key components of a data protection strategy. Frequency relates to how often data backups are performed and it's guided by what is called the recovery point objective or RPL, which defines the maximum amount of data that can be lost without significantly um, harming the, the business. For instance, if an RPL is set to one hour, backups should occur at least every hour to ensure that no more than one hour's worth of data is ever lost. Retention involves determining how often versions of the backup uh, data uh, or of backup data to retain and for how long. It addresses the need to restore earlier versions of data, uh, possibly before corruption or an error occurred. Retention policies might require keeping daily backups for a week, uh, weekly backups for a month, and monthly backups for a year, depending on the criticality of the data and legal or regulatory requirements. Understanding a backup chain is essential. It's the sequence of backup files that are interdependent uh, for a complete restore. For instance, if you're using an incremental backup method, you need the full backup and all subsequent incremental backups to restore the system to the latest point. If um, any link in this chain is missing or corrupted, it can prevent the restoration of data uh, from that point forward. Before managing the backup chain is crucial to ensure uh, data integrity and restore capabilities. Now, what is the difference then between the uh, full incremental and differential backup? The full backup is the most comprehensive type of backup. It involves copying all the data that you want to, uh, to protect. It creates a complete replica of the source data at the point in time when the backup is taken. Since every file is backed up, it requires more storage space and takes longer to complete compared to other types of backups. However, recovery from a full backup is faster because you only need the latest full backup to restore all of the data. Incremental backup saves data that has changed or it is new since the last backup regardless of the type. After a full backup is done, the incremental will backup any changes made to the data uh, the next time that, that it runs. Each incremental backup is typically smaller and quicker to perform than a full backup. However, recover can be slower because it requires the last full backup plus all subsequent incremental backups to restore the data up to the most recent point. And finally, a differential backup. Uh, a differential backup also starts with a full backup, but each differential backup saves the data uh, that has changed since the last full backup, not since the last differential backup. Uh, this means the uh, differential backups grow larger with time 
as they accumulate more changes. However, recovery is faster than with incrementals because you only need the last full backup and the last differential backup to restore all of the data. In summary, full backups are the most space and time consuming, but they are the simplest to restore from. Incremental backups are the most uh, space and time efficient, but can lead to complex restorations. And uh, differential backups strike a middle point, or a middle ground rather, uh, requiring more space than incrementals, but less than full backups, with a simpler restoration process than incrementals. Backup media requirements. The grandfather-son GFS backup method is a popular rotation scheme that manages data backups by maintaining three levels of backup. The grandfather or oldest, uh, the father is the middle and the son the most recent. This approach is part of a broader strategy to ensure data redundancy and recovery. In the context of the GFS scheme, uh, some backups might be incremental, uh, capturing daily changes. The father level uh, typically represents a full backup taken at the end of each week, and the grandfather uh, backups are the monthly full backups. Although the uh, 2 1 tape system is widely cited. It is just one variant of the GFS, and modern implementations may not use tapes at all or may adjust the numbers and types of backups according to um, data size and importance. The grandparent parent child, or GPC term, is a more inclusive way to describe this strategy, but isn't as commonly used. I am including this concept over here, but very unlikely you're going to get many questions regarding this on the A-plus exam. Uh, the 231 backup, the or 321 backup rule, emphasizes having at least three total copies of your data, two of which are on different media, like a, a server disk and, or a, and a tape drive and one of which is off-site. Applying the 3-2-1 rule, a personal backup solution could include the original data on a computer's hard drive, a backup on a removable disk via a tool like the Windows Backup, and a third copy in the cloud. When the, now, now, it's important to understand that uh, in the 321 rule and the GFS or GPC uh, backup scheme, uh, it's a it, it, it it's crucial, I would say, uh, to think about this concepts in you know uh, how they can practically be implemented in in different scenarios, uh, including personal data backups or within an organization, uh, taking into account factors like the value of the data the capacity for storage and recovery requirements. All of these are important uh, uh, concepts or key components to keep in mind. Now, we talked a lot about concepts over here that may not necessarily be on the A-plus exam, but I think that in the long run, it is important to understand this uh, as you move along in your uh, IT career uh, journey. As we mentioned before, uh, backup testing and, and recovery is crucial. Uh, you need to test the restore to an alternate location, for example, just to make sure that the data is it's good. You need verification. So data validation um, via hashing, for example, this ensures that the data has not been tampered with or modified or corrupted. So if you have a hash of a backup and 
you compare the hash later on, if that value has not changed, it means that the, uh, the data is integral and most likely is not corrupted. So that would basically prove media integrity. Um, it is important to check the configuration, meaning are all necessary locations of files included. Uh, and also it's important to keep in mind uh, the frequency and, and testing of the data. Uh, there has been many cases in which uh, companies think that they have a good and valid backup. And then when time comes, uh, the data is not actually, uh, it's not good and therefore it cannot be recovered. Okay. Now disasters are hopefully uh, uncommon events. I mean, they're not, uh, they don't happen that often, but it is important that if they ever happen, that we are prepared and that we can recover uh, to a point in which uh, the company can continue to do business. So in this section, we cover uh, backup and recovery. We talked about uh, backup operations and some uh, best practices. We also talked about uh, backup methods. We discuss backup media requirements, and we also discuss backup testing and recovery best practices. In the lab activity, uh, you will configure Windows Backup and use it to restore files. And then this will serve as uh, putting in context some of the concepts that we learn in this, uh, in this lesson.